Hey yo, I'm Wit, and I'm super excited for another episode of Empowered Creator Podcast. This episode is filled with ways to create with me and the guests. I'd love it if you would share your perspective on the topics discussed in the comments. Also join me in the empowering activity, and you can submit a creation of your own to be featured in upcoming episodes. Don't forget, you are a powerful creator, and you're an important part of creating the world we want to see. All right, let's get this episode started. All right, y'all, it's go time for another Crate with Wit. This is where I invite you to join me in an empowering activity. Whether you're listening to this or watching the video, feel free to jump on in. Today, we're calling back our power. Have you ever experienced your mind spiraling about a specific person or an event? Maybe you feel drained throughout the day, and you're not sure why. Well, this activity is meant to assist in calling your power back so you can be the most you throughout the day. To begin, I want you to think about all the different things that have been in your thoughts today. Specifically, the people, events, and activities you've engaged with or thought about that have taken up a decent amount of headspace. This could be a partner, friends, family, work, social media, anything you have spent a lot of time thinking about or engaging with. Now I want to say that as we do this activity, calling your power back from these things does not mean that you don't care about them. And it doesn't mean that you're hurting them in any way. You're calling back your own power, not anyone else's. You can be in your own power and love others at the same time, okay? Okay, so now that you've got a list in mind, I want you to visualize an energetic cord that you've sent out to each of these things that's attached to you. It doesn't matter the shape or color, the way you visualize it is perfect. If visualizing is difficult, there's nothing wrong with you. Feel free to think of the words I say or create your own words along the way. Next, we're going to call back each cord that we've sent out. I like to visualize myself pulling the cord back hand over hand until it's back within me while singing, I've got the power. You know that 90s song by Snap? If you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, <laughs> maybe go look it up after this. It's pretty great. <laughs> okay, okay, back on track. So sometimes when I'm doing this activity, I do a physical gesture with my body to really feel it. So when I'm calling back my power, each cord I physically move. Let's take a few moments to pull back all of our power. Do 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 I've got the power! Okay, I'm not gonna sing it the whole time. I'm just gonna allow the music to play and we'll pull back our power. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling more myself after that. How do you feel? I'd love to hear about it in the comments, actually. And maybe I might be sharing some of the comments in future podcast episodes. Also, feel free to come back to this activity anytime. Or even better, create your own version of it that works best for you. This can just be a jumping off point. I'm totally good with that. And actually, I love that. That's the whole point of this podcast, after all. As always, I want to say thank you for co-creating with me, everyone, and a big love to you. Y'all, it's great music time. Sometimes I have a guest with me during this segment. Sometimes I get the okay to share a video from the artist. And sometimes the guest can be seen and heard live wherever you are. 
Are you intrigued about that last part? <laughs> well, today, the Create Music guest is Mother Earth, sharing the music she created in Salida, Colorado, on the Arkansas River. So the sound that I recorded and the footage that I took was done so after connecting with her energy and asking for permission. She is happy to share. So here we go. Create Healing is here, everyone. This segment, we've got Shannon Stott. Shannon is the creator and director of Improv On and Off the Stage, which is an improv production company producing live and virtual projects that help people connect to themselves and others through improv. So much fun. She has been performing, directing, and teaching improv for over 25 years in the U.S. and internationally. She uses improv to highlight the importance of communication across cultures and with self. Shannon considers improv a practice, encouraging people to engage with improv as a way to discover more about themselves and others in order to bridge gaps in cultural understanding. While you watch and or listen, feel free to ponder if the practice of yes and feels aligned for you to implement into your own life and also what comes up for you while entertaining the thought of taking an improv class yourself? Okay, here's my chat with Shannon. Shannon Stott, Shannon Stott, Shannon Stott, Stott is here. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so excited that you're here to chat with me today. I have been wanting to chat with you more in depth for other people to experience you because I find you very magical and fun and playful. And I am just so excited to <laughs> allow others to experience your magic and, and speak improv. Cause I know this is a big passion of yours, huge part of your life. So I guess we could start there improv. Like, what is that? How do you, how do you do improv in your own life? What is that looking like? And people have this idea of what improv is and what it looks like. And it's yes. people on the stage, quote, making stuff up on the spot, end quote, right? <laughs> <laughs> Either it's terrible or it, it can be brilliant. But we have sort of a, mm, not mystifying, but like, ugh, Im improv, I could never do that is a, is a thing yes. that comes up. Mm -hmm. um, how could you do that? Just put yourself out there, these types of things. Yep. Here's what's actually happening behind the scenes. 
What's actually happening is you are learning to communicate so well with yourself, your partners, and the audience and the environment around you, whether that is an environment you've made up or the actual physical environment, you're learning to communicate so well with those things that it feels to the audience like, oh, this, that thing just came out of nowhere. But really there's this deep, deep communication. So that's one. Communication is the one, the first thing. And the second thing that (laughs) I want to just, what, what is improv is communication with self. And in parentheses, maybe putting yourself first. (laughs) Okay. So we've got that little nugget and we'll get like into the weeds, but you asked me, how is it showing up for me? And one communication is showing up hugely. And to be very honest, um, I've noticed that I, in some aspects, I am a good communicator. I, when it comes to my feelings, I communicate well, but I'm mm-hmm. learning and I'm in a season of learning how to communicate with others about real life stuff. Where, where are we going? Details, 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 details. I'm not a good detail person. So I'm really learning to communicate those things. And then mm-hmm. the other thing really is the secret about putting myself first. It sounds like a selfish thing, but it's, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's not. Ooh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wow. 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 I, I don't know if I've told you this, but I took an improv class maybe a decade ago or a little more than a decade ago. Maybe not. Did you tell me this? I don't tell know. Me. Tell me now. I had, I was just like on a whim. I was like, yes, I'm going to do this. I was in San Francisco at the time. And I remember going into it being terrified because of the things that you talked about. Like, how could I put myself out there? And it feels like people are just pulling from nowhere and ah. And my experience with improv during that time was it was play. I just got to play for an hour or two hours or however long the sessions were. And, and yeah, it was a big piece of the listening and observing and um, allowing myself to kind of come out too. But the play aspect was huge, huge, huge. And then at the end, like maybe like six weeks of this class, we're like, okay, now we're going to do a showcase. You can invite your friends and family. And I, I will admit at that point in my life, I was, I couldn't do it. I was so scared. (laughs) I was so scared. The wit now would just do it and just be and just allow the wit back then I I took I could take the class I could play whatever whatever but the moment there were like eyes looking I was like "Ah!" (laughs) so okay this is I love this because one the play is so fascinating and it is the fixture of improv right we (laughs) we need to play And that's why we, the communication, share all of that stuff, learning to love self. But the way we do that is through this playtime. So when we're playing like in the workshop or whatnot, and we're playing, we feel freer. We feel like, ah, this is fun. And as Mm -hmm. we're feeling that way, we learn, right? We learn, okay, I can, if I can do it here, I can do it maybe on stage and maybe in real life, like just improvise that way. Yes. But also there's a trust, trust act aspect that comes with that yes and if you weren't feeling fully like you could trust everything that was going to happen trust your partners trust yourself trust the audience trust 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 Mm -hmm. i can this that's your pass (laughs) for not (laughs) yeah yeah right this that's like such a big deal to Mm -hmm. to play in an environment where you trust the people that you're playing with. Yes. The trust component. It, if anything, now looking back, I just take it as really helpful information Mm -hmm. about where I was at then. And I give that wit so much love. Like she put herself out there in, in really big ways for her at that time. And then, and then there was this line that I wasn't willing to cross at the time. And then it was like, you know what? Good for you, wit. You, you stepped out of your comfort zone. (laughs) 
<laughs> and then and then you hit this line where you weren't willing to cross and you put a boundary down. You're like, nope, not doing that. So like I can give her so much love and respect for standing up for that and not just like forcing myself into a panic attack because that's kind of what it felt like I was going to experience. <laughs> So yeah, it, it's taught me a ton. And then reflecting back and using that now too, I guess I'd love to hear from your perspective, what are some of the lessons that you haven't already talked about that you've learned from improv? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> this this is great. I I wasn't I wasn't going I was gonna I'm gonna see if I can pull something up for you. Okay. Um, posted something the other day, and I was like, wow, this is controversial. But you're <laughs> asking the lessons I, i'll start with the lesson the lesson this is the controversial part okay when do it people really think that truly yes and yes and means saying yes to everything and it doesn't mean that yes In order to protect yourself you must say no and no can come in very many forms Mm -hmm. but we don't say yes to everything right right when you when when this past wit said no thank you i am not moving <laughs> forward <laughs> this is a good choice for wit you know because it needs to protect themselves i mm -hmm. it's, it's, this is real life and I feel like we get into situations where we put people in situations where they can't, where they don't feel like they are part of the team in improv, right? They don't, mm -hmm. they don't feel like they're part of the team because they didn't say yes to something, but maybe that saying yes to that thing wasn't good for them. Mm -hmm. And then that goes back to how do we protect ourselves, right? Yeah. So what is improv? What is improv? <laughs> you know? Yes. I honestly, uh, leading up to this conversation, and maybe for the last week or so, I've been thinking about the yes and thing. Mm -hmm. And the way that I've been processing that rule, and I guess just, do you want to just give a brief uh, definition of what yes and is? Sure. In general, when we're talking about yes and in the improv world, it is yes, I hear you. And I'm going to build on your idea. Mm -hmm. That's how it's usually taught. I hear you. I accept this right. reality. And I'm going to build on the idea. That yes. is the general premise of what we are learning when we're learning Yes And. Okay. Got it. Got it. Just so everyone's on the same page. Yes. So I was thinking about that leading up to this conversation. And I was thinking about it in relation to my own life and conversations I've been having with people with different perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, I purposely surround myself with people with wildly different perspectives than my own and opinions and beliefs and all this stuff. And it kind of keeps me on my toes. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. And I was reframing the yes and kind of rule, kind of, you know, practice to when I'm saying yes to someone, I'm not saying I agree with it necessarily, or I am choosing to go down that path. I am saying, like, yes, I see you. And I'm going to add my perspective to the mix. So that's kind of how I've shifted that in my own world <laughs> to kind of apply it. We're going to talk about that. We're Let's go. Talk. This is so this is what I wrote. I yes. <laughs> Listen. The answer to improv is not yes and. Improv is a statement. My offer is not a question that you are approving. I am not looking for your approval. My offer is a statement. Your yes and is actually yes ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, so this is the thing. Yes. We're talking in this particular little bit, I'm talking about appro approval, right? Because we can get into this space where what we are feeling is like, oh, I have an idea. I hope this person approves of it, right? Like, right. Or the flip side is when I say yes and I am approving of your idea. It's a good idea. Right. I think it's good. But who are you to tell me my idea is good or not? <laughs> <laughs> and who am I to have to have an idea and then have to come to you 
to question it. Like it, that's not what yes and is about. So right. we put that in a little approval click. Yes. And then we go to this, what you were talking about before. It's yes, I hear what you're saying. And now I get to interpret. Yes. Like mm -hmm. I get to, I, I hear, but it doesn't mean that I agree. We hear a lot of things. In our yes. Lives. <laughs> so many things. <laughs> Right. We hear so many things in our lives and we don't agree with them. And it's, it is actually, if the world could really get on this concept of, I hear you, I may not agree with you, but let's see if I can find in myself where we can go together. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about actual communication. Now we're talking about joining and unifying and bigger picture. You know, it yep. starts to sound like, um, it starts to sound very big and very poetic. Yes. But at ground level, it isn't that big and it is definitely more concrete than it is ethereal. Mm-hmm. I, I have been using that lately <laughs> in, <laughs> in practice with, with folks and it has made all the difference. I'm not, like you said, like I'm not, when I'm sharing something, I'm not asking for anyone's approval or like stamp of like, oh yes, that's correct or not. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm sharing to share my perspective, period full stop. Like, <laughs> that's right. it. And, and, um, and I, and I welcome other people sharing theirs as well. And I think that's the beauty of the back and forth and the communication and to take it kind of a step further with the, I know a like scene stopper in improv is when you don't kind of do the yes and practice and you say like, no, or you kind of hard pivot somewhere and it's like jarring and the audience is like, what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. So relating that to my own life like anytime i've done that where i've been like that's wrong conversation stops relationship connection stops there's just like nowhere for it to go like it's yeah. just like and when i'm thinking about the world i want to create and the world i want to be in there's less of that and more of again i don't i'm not taking everyone's perspective and me like all of this is mine to right. embody <laughs> that is not it i'm i'm you know i'm only this body i can't embody yeah. all of you. <laughs> but yes we're not trying to we aren't trying to stop the idea when we take a chance to pivot right and this right. is the this is the thing we, we're talking about pivoting um as a stop but yeah let's oh you were talking about like uh flow this this flow that happens, right? Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is in improv, we have this idea that it's bad to pivot, bad to pivot. So that <laughs> now don't, don't do that. Don't do that. So, and that gets equated with saying no, but mm. we're more talking about what you're, if teachers were able to take that language out and talk a little bit more about flow like you're talking about then we would have this idea that hey we can bring back pivoting as a all right we're not saying no what we're saying is i hear you i respect you mm -hmm. let me see let me let me chew on this <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Each on this, and we can we can dance with this idea, whatever it, whatever the idea is. It's funny to me. People really think that their idea is obvious and the right one. Right. <laughs> yes. It's so it's so obvious. <laughs> we even teach in you know we teach in improv. Be obvious. But what's obvious to me when the sun rises to do in the morning may not be obvious to you right? to do right. when the sun rises in the morning. And so if I'm thinking, oh, the sun, the sun rose, wit is going to do something obvious. And wit does something. Because <laughs> what I was going to say was, wit's going to do something obvious. And then mm -hmm. wit, you know, cracks eggs. To to me, that's not to me, we make coffee first. That's <laughs> <obvious>. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, yep. Right? But if I'm playing with different cultures, if I'm playing with someone who speaks a different language, if I'm playing with different genders, if I'm playing with different races, if I, whatever, if I'm playing with someone who is not 100% me, mm -hmm. their obvious is different than my obvious. And we are right back to what does yes and mean? So yes, oh, that's your obvious choice. Okay, yes, it, okay. And how do I, how do I help build the world around us? We're important. Wit and I are important. Yes. And it's people get people get real testy wit. <laughs> they get real nasty because they want to talk about. Well, no, you you, you can't say no. Then mm hmm mm hmm slicing little hairs. There are so many pieces to this. There are so many pieces to this. I feel like this could be, I mean, you've put out so many uh, videos and uh, thoughts and stuff about how this applies to, you know, real life, I guess. Mm -hmm. That feels like a weird thing to say because improv is also real life that we're doing. It just happened to be on a stage that you're doing it on. But I guess I'm curious, too, if there are any specific improv, like, tricks or practices that you're like, I've seen this work wonders in people's lives to like utilize. So many. So many. <laughs> so, so many. Let's easy one. Easy one. Easy one. Um, just being in the moment when we are practicing, being in the moment on stage, we're talking about, okay, what is being offered to us? What's being offered to us? Is it a tree? Cool. What <laughs> what's obviously around a tree? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, how do we like Sometimes that's, that is nerve wracking. What that's very it's nerve wracking. So easy practice is to point at things, literally, I, you know, point at things and call them by name, right? Uh, I'm, I, branch, pot, sculpture, chair, yes, mirror, these things. Uh huh. And then, and I say call them by name, call them out loud. This will get mm -hmm. you started in this space where you literally are presently in the moment right this mm -hmm. is great when your mind is racing you're doing something your mind is racing and you're like i don't even i'm thinking 10 days ahead i'm taking thinking six months ahead yes just, just point and call and then to give your brain a little bit of like play the play that we're talking about yes point at the first thing whatever it is and then point at the second thing and call it the first thing. So it might go like branches, <laughs> mirror, ooh, uh, sculpture, plant. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> so this this helps like unlock us from being stuck because when our minds are racing and we can't we can't catch up, we're really in the future. Let us re be. Let us bring ourselves back to the present, but now let's play in the present. Like, right? We're just uh, in the mind, but let's play in here. This is going to release some endorphins. It's going to release some stress. There we go. Well, I'm excited to try that. <laughs> so I love, I love the practice of improv. I do. It's so fun. I, it's when you talk to people, when I'm talking to you, when you're like, play it was so playful I'm like, right obviously i've been doing improv so long. i'm just like yes the meaning behind <laughs> the power behind the, you know but the playfulness and you and i talk about play so much in our art and how important it is to yes yes do the things do the do the dishes do the but when we are being present when we're really like enjoying ourselves it's because we're playing with what mm. we're doing in the dishes and doing the grind whatever mm -hmm. it's important to just remember that things can be loose to hold things loosely yeah oh, and that's I, I mean we're talking improv in life like doing an improv class so so helps you hold things loosely mm -hmm. <laughs> right? make a thing and then it's disappeared you're never yep. gonna see that thing again there's no clinging on to 
anything and improv. And that's, I think that's a huge lesson I learned when I did take that class. Cause I went in and I, I was, it was so funny that past wit was so funny. She was very like prepared for improv, which is hilarious. I come I'm like, look at all the ideas I have rolling around in my head right now. And then you show up and like, nope. <laughs> You do. It's protection mode. Mm -hmm. Improv is so, it is known to be so ethereal, right? That we have to protect ourselves from the complete unknown, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know you. And you're asking me to get on stage and tell a whole story with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the thing is, it's like, that moment it's the same moment when we get on a bus or the metro you know it's like i don't i don't know this bus driver i don't know these people but i have to share my story and the story is we're riding on this thing together so mm -hmm. and improv if when we make those listen look wit <laughs> <laughs> i love when you do this <laughs> I can't connect the two. <laughs> like this is this is my love. But yeah, when we take improv classes, we learn that oh, it's okay for me to get on this bus, it, right? We learn in the class yeah. or through the practice, through the practice, really. Oh, I see. When I make space, when I when I create space for other people's ideas, for other people mm -hmm. on stage, when I get on the bus. I also create space for other people, like yes. physical space and and just awareness. What do these? What does this person carrying these bags need? Maybe mm -hmm. they don't need me to help with the bags, but maybe they need me to move a little bit. You know? Yeah. This, yeah. This is the same translation. It's it's the same. It's the same. <laughs> Come on, everyone. <laughs> do it, bro. Come on. Speaking of, so like. I know over the years, you've had a lot of different things going on with what you offer and, and performances that you've done and everything like that. Is there anything in particular that you want to share with folks that you that you're working on or that you have coming up or anything like that? Yes, I am. I am working. I am have been consistently working on my one person show. I, I know it. I, I am excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> but this, listen, I'm telling I'm telling listeners that only because something is bubbling. Look out. If you're wondering, if you're wondering, go check out my website. Yes. Walkthestage.com. Before we fully, fully go. Okay. Is there anything else that you would tell someone that like is curious about improv and maybe they want to take a class or maybe even they just want to implement some things in their life? Is there anything like a baseline starting kind of thing that you would share with someone? I would tell somebody that truly they are important. Mm. That is what I would tell them. And if you are interested in taking an improv class, go in with the idea that yes, you you are an important part of humanity, mm -hmm. and you and others are also an important part of humanity. Yeah, you deserve to be heard. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be seen. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. take an improv class. Yes. Go. <laughs> were, someone told me recently, and they were right. If you were waiting for a sign, this is it. <laughs> this is the sign. Bye. I love and it. Also, say curiosity. Go with curiosity. Mm, mm -hmm. that's huge and if you go with the list it probably won't remain <laughs> sorry sorry but you know what but write it anyway write it anyway <laughs> do what you gotta do <laughs> Whit did 10 years ago Whit did it's fine <laughs> fine look where they are now yeah yeah Oh, thank you so, so, so much, Shannon. Like always, the all of Shannon's links and things will be in the description. So go check her out. She's doing amazing things. I love her dearly. And yeah, I think that's it. Thanks, Wit. You're the best. I love you. I miss you. I love you. I miss you too. Feeling a bit stuck? Not sure what steps to take to embody more of your most authentic and powerful self? 
The Empowered Mindset course follows the workbook of the same name for a full year of affirmations and empowering activities. For less than 85 cents a week, you get 52 videos of wit walking alongside you to a more empowered mindset, plus five additional videos of bonus activities that aren't in the workbook. Healing and growth don't have to be so serious all the time. Although you can choose that path if you want to, wit uses play, joy, and creativity to guide to a more empowered mindset. So if that sounds exciting, you can find more information and sign up at empowered-projects.com. Woo, have you seen the Create and Spiral merch that Wit has been wearing? The ones with the aqua, teal, purple, and magenta colors popping? Well, there's a whole shop available full of different options for you to choose from. Hats, hoodies, t-shirts, bags, stickers, and more. Each sale helps Wit continue making the podcast better and better, and also assists with spreading the word so even more powerful creators can join us as we create the world we want to see. Go to empowered-projects.com slash shop to check it out. It's time to create connection with Christy and Z again, everyone. Last episode, we got to know both of them and their connection a little bit. If you missed it, go check it out so you have a better understanding of who these lovely folks are. This episode is a continuation of that conversation. So some of the things to think about are what conversations are important for you to have at the start of a connection? How do you allow your full self to show up in connections? And what does accountability in your connections look like? Ooh! If you feel like sharing your answers to any of those questions in the comments, please do. Love, love, love to see anybody's perspectives being shared there. This is a co-creative, collaborative effort. All right, time for the convo. So like when you first got together, did you have like certain conversations? We just like went for a walk in the park. <laughs> Aww. And it was with her, like I just found right from the beginning that I was like, hey, look, like that's really interesting that I'm entirely being myself. <laughs> I like haven't done that before. So I had a nice self high five moment for like all the self work that I did in that whole perspective to have that. And then we sat down and she was like, so for real, I was like, I need somebody real. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I, I don't want like the, the light stuff. I don't need toxic positivity. Like <laughs> I want to be real, real. Like I want to get into the deep shit and be super vulnerable. And then she started to poke at me because she's really good at poking. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also really good at poking too. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, you both seem like you're really good at asking questions on the surface. You're like, oh, that wasn't too deep. But then you dig into it and you're like, ooh, that got in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really big one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we had like safe words from the beginning. Like if you need cave time, like go ahead and take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take, it personally. take it personally. We really opened up the space for vulnerability and just non-judgment right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it was really important that we took it like really slow and just getting to know each other. Curiosity was a value of both of ours, I think. And so just being able to ask each other's each other questions and sit with the discomfort of that <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. For a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be real with my answer here. <laughs> <laughs> really like we had done a lot of our own personal self-work and it was like here are the things that we work through this is what our family's like these are the um, recurring issues that we've we've had in relationships and with ourselves and we kind of put everything out on the table mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah like it's it looks like it's just kind of like okay i'm gonna allow you to see all this <laughs> yeah and like like you said earlier, Christy, it's like, okay, if you don't like it, I guess that's fine. But like, here it is. Y'all mentioned curiosity too. And I'm recognizing for myself, that's so, so important. Like not just even in romantic relationships, but also like friendships and stuff. Like the curiosity piece for me 
allows me to then see who this person is or how they're showing up today and in this moment. Just allowing the curiosity to kind of like have a seat at the table for me has been super important because then then I feel like, oh, if they're being curious with me too, I can show up however I show up every single day. And it doesn't need, I don't need to hold on to how I showed up yesterday or a week ago or whatever. Yeah. For me, that's been so important in practice. I haven't practiced it. I've been joyfully single for like two years, but <laughs> I guess in practice for you all, like what is the curiosity? How does that play out day to day? We try to keep everything at a curiosity level. So if if there's something that pops up for us, whether that's like a trigger or something that uh, is perceived that's really intense, we go, oh, hey, look, like I'm really curious about why that showed up on the table today. Sure, sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I think it like it leaves a lot more room for um, compassion and not going into attacking places because it's like, oh, there's probably a reason why we are acting this way. <laughs> yeah. And it's really helpful in that regard. And we, we asked each other a lot of like, we did a lot of decks, card decks from different relationship, relationship <laughs> games. Yeah. Relationship oh games. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's we still, cool. them. yeah, we do. We keep up on that. Yeah. We do yeah, that's awesome. a lot of, a lot of connection time mm -hmm. uh, that we spend in nice. asking really deep questions and, those decks are really great too. Yeah. I really recommend yeah. them. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Do you have yeah. like a favorite that you, that's like a go-to? I really like Where Should We Begin by Esther Perel. Ooh. Okay. She's now I'm going to, I'm going to Google that after this. <laughs> yeah. And she yeah. released yeah. a number two. <laughs> okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, it really takes you into really uncomfortable question <laughs> and it's so funny because they seem so like gentle when you read them and then you start talking about it and i would remember i remember finding myself and being like why am i crying so much now <laughs> <laughs> i thought this was an easy question it was a straightforward question <laughs> here we are <laughs> now there are tears <laughs> <laughs> and that's when the curiosity is always good to put in there because mm -hmm. then you're like, huh, like, why did that come up? Because you think it was really uh, an, an insignificant question that was like surface level and it's really not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, then we, and then we tag that back into like, okay, where would the word that come from? And we do work parts work, which is also really good. So our any of the parts that are on the table, like where did that come from? What age might it have been from? Or what like yeah. trauma could it have come from? And totally. then work that piece together. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I think IFS internal family systems is really helpful for like, um, instead of like blaming or attacking or like villainizing each other, it's like, oh, this is, this is a part of me is saying this. And maybe there's a part of you that is feeling frustrated or a part of me that is feeling some type of way. And then you can track it back to where that frustration is coming from. And it generally is never from each other. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. I yeah. think that all of this is like super interesting because I think at least from my perspective in the relationships I've been in, it can be so easy to create stories based mm -hmm. on what you think someone is like experiencing or like, oh, you know, they, they exhibited this behavior or they exhibited this um, emotion a week ago and they said it was that and they're doing it again. So I'm going to assume it's that same thing, but it's like, unless mm -hmm. you're doing what you're saying and you're kind of like putting all those pieces on the table and you're being curious, you might, the answer is probably going to be very different, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And we both work with people in, in that type of format too, just in different ways. Cause I'm an alternative healing therapist and you are a marriage and family therapist. <laughs> so. and You're doing some work. You're doing some work. Well, we have a fun combo. So we know how to like get in really deep. <laughs> And, and, ask question. <laughs> and, and also avoid and all of those things are spaces. We're very aware of ourselves. 
And now I'm curious too with that, because you're so aware of yourselves. And then it sounds like you're doing the work to be more aware of each other too. Like, <laughs> then is it super easy to be like, oh, you're avoiding that right now? Or, oh, you like, like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, like, absolutely ridiculous. That's when we get really pokey. <laughs> 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 and it's really learning how to do that in a way that's going to be empowering and supportive to the other person. So yeah. uh, if like, I know she's in a space where she's starting to shut down from something, then I don't do so much pokey because she needs yeah. to have the space to be able to process that. Yeah. Sometimes for, <laughs> she gets really pokey even if I have <laughs> shut down space and I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I gotta process some things. <laughs> Learned about wow. a little bit. <laughs> Just I'm I'm picturing, you know, that meme of like Homer backing away into the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, <bye. laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. It's really cool like that. It is really, really big in communication. I would say, like for me, I over communicate. Uh, because it just knows that it just, it just helps and is useful for like where we're at. And so, and that is like in the, the most deepest times when I absolutely don't want to communicate and I want to, and I definitely want to go hide. That is the, the time where I'm like, yeah, so I, <laughs> I'm going to tell you that there's a death phase right now and it's happening and I want to hate you and it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> I think the fact that you both dig into what it actually is and not point out at each other, I'm just recognizing like that's so huge. I've just witnessed myself doing that where it's like the whole, and I see this online all the time, right? And TikToks and like videos and stuff of like, you make me feel, they made me feel whatever. And it's like placing the blame on other people. And, yeah. and so I'm just curious from your perspective, from your two perspectives, how much responsibility and accountability do we have for our own stuff? Like, especially in relationships, like, is there ever a, is there ever a point where you're just like, no, that actually is you, or is it always, are you always kind of coming back into yourself? Always coming back into self and say accountability is like 100% of the game. Yeah. And for me, like I veer into over accountability. <laughs> We're like, it was all me. I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> and that's also one of my, my programming. So we, we both take accountability right off the bat, even if that's really yeah. hard. And I think like repair is where I have been focusing a lot of time in is just like learning to repair and just being able to say like, I hurt you and that sucked. And how can I do things differently so that we can move forward um, mm -hmm. and come back? Together and come back together closer after conflict um, because yeah. conflict happens in every relationship and I think it's important to learn to work through that yeah. and I think we've done that in a pretty awesome way. It's super important to be able to repair in a way that I would say just really allows the other person to feel what they're feeling and have that be valid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm just reflecting on the relationships I've had and, and almost like there were some of them, this is probably the people pleasing part. It was almost some of them, like the conflict or the disagreements weren't there for so long. Like it just felt like it was smooth sailing, but really I'm like, looking back, I'm like, what wasn't <laughs> being said? <laughs> <laughs> there's so much there's so much out there there's be like oh we never fight and then people are like put it on this weird pedestal of like if you never disagree that's like the the that's best good. type of relationship i'm like no nah. i'm not saying it isn't but i'm not saying it is like it's like if you're two separate human beings and two separate like perspectives on things inevitably you're gonna have differences of opinion like that's gonna come up it does this is this is not like a surface level thing we have gone into the deep shit we have hurt yeah. each other <laughs> <laughs> right right yes and it and sounds like you're both just like really committed to the like you're saying christy the repair part and mm -hmm. the like not 
you know, allowing that to just be like, oh, well, that was just that moment. And then we move on. It's like, no, like I'm going to own my part and you'll own your part and that type of thing, which is really mm-hmm. awesome. Don't like burying things under the rug. That doesn't feel good. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> well, they always come back. It all like inevitably in some way it like creeps back. Right. And it's like, why don't we just that rug look gets at it now? Cool, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in appreciation of Christy and Z right now? Me. I so appreciate them sharing their take on creating connection and posing some really helpful questions so we can all dive deeper into the types of connections we want to create in our own lives. So helpful. Like always, you can check out Christy and Z's information in the description to see what they've got going on outside of podcast land. What are you creating today? This is the part of the podcast where you share your creations. It's my fave. We've got Michael with a creation this episode. Michael is very creative in how he takes challenging topics and life experiences and creates thoughtful videos for folks to engage with. Let's take a look at one of Michael's videos now. Let's talk about knowing your worth. You're, if you're in a toxic situation, chances are that your worth has been siphoned away from you. This has been done to force you to serve the toxic ego. This is an ego that grows ever larger with your silence. Now is the time to speak up, to tell your truth, to protect yourself. You must break free from the debt collector's mindset that tells you that the toxic person must make you pay what they decide you owe them. To paraphrase the notion by Dr. Les Carter, You made it my job to cater to your entitlement. I don't owe that to you. You insist that I have to rearrange my priorities to suit you. I don't owe that to you. You tell me that I have to justify my thoughts, my beliefs, my attitudes. I don't owe that to you. You criticize me and expect me to just take it from you. I don't owe that to you. You presume feeling superior to me and require me to assume the inferior position. I don't owe that to you. You think that you are so correct in your mind. You insist that I have to lay down my own intellect. I don't owe that to you. When you unload your anger and I'm just supposed to cower and overlook the bullying, I don't owe that to you. When you make lame excuses for your intolerable behavior, then blame me. I don't owe that to you. When you try to silence me, I don't owe that to you. I owe it to myself to live with dignity and self-respect intact. I owe it to myself to stand up for my core values. I owe it to myself to position myself with people who honor my decency and civility. I owe it to myself to be a voice of reason. I owe it to myself to remain inside my well-conceived boundaries. Thank you so, so much, Michael, for sharing your creation with us. If you're inspired to share your creation on the podcast, Go to the link in the description. Thank you for co-creating the Empowered Creator podcast with us. Whether you participated in the empowering activities with wit, moved and grooved to the music, took note of the perspectives and questions posed by guests to reflect on later, or submitted what you're creating in your life, this podcast is what it is because of all of us, a beautiful, collective, creative effort. If you'd like to be featured during the What Are You Creating Today segment, Submit your creations to Empowered Creator Podcast at empowered projects.com or via the form on the podcast webpage. There is no creation that is too small. Your creations are your moment to moment choices. Lastly, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow, and share to help this podcast reach even more powerful creators. See you next time. <laughs>